Hi, Mr. Vig here. I just want to do a couple of quick demos with some spherical mirrors. So uh, what you see here on camera is I have two different types of spherical mirrors. Uh, the mirror here on the left is a concave spherical mirror and the mirror here on the right is a convex spherical mirror. Now we've been looking at the ray diagrams of these two mirrors and um, this week we're also examining how to describe the mirrors with um, with equations. Uh, one difference being that if it is a concave mirror, mathematically I consider the focal point a positive value. If it's a convex mirror, uh, mathematically the focal point would be considered a negative value. Now um, these two mirrors look pretty identical on the paper, but if I re reflect myself in them as I tilt the concave mirror you see my image is inverted but if I tilt the convex mirror you see my image is not inverted if I tilt both at the same time you can compare now the orientation of the image is not the only thing that's actually different here um, what's also going on is for the concave mirror that inverted image is a real image that is it's being formed above the mirror and the ray diagram shows us that uh, if I had a bit different setup in class, we would actually sh project my image on a piece of paper, um, and that's the true meaning of a real image. For the convex mirror, uh, this image is not inverted, but that's because it's also being formed uh, behind the mirror. Uh, it's a virtual image. Uh, there would be no way to shine this image onto a piece of paper. Now, uh, to be able to see, it's a little hard with these true spherical mirrors to demonstrate what's going on with light rays. But I have a, another type of circular mirror. Um, this mirror here is uh, not quite is not spherical, but it has the advantage of being a partially circular mirror. And I can that's handy because it will hold itself up on a piece of paper. So what I've done here on the paper is I've labeled the principal axis which is the center line of the mirror. And I've traced out where the mirror should be so it is, it's all lined up with the center line. So let me take a moment to place the mirror down. So I've placed the mirror on the piece of paper so the principal axis goes through the center of the mirror. And I've pre-measured this is the center of curvature for this mirror. And the focal point is halfway between the mirror and the center of curvature. Now I have here a laser ray box and what I'm going to do is send a light ray through the principal axis and we'll see that it reflects straight back. So let me line up a little bit. There we go, that's pretty good. Um, and you'll see that the light ray, as it passes through the center, um, hits the mirror and it's bouncing straight back. I don't see any reflection above or below. But if I turn on additional rays off the principal axis, you'll see that these light rays parallel to the principal axis are reflecting through a common point, the focal point. In fact, I can turn on uh, more and you'll see that they all uh, go through the focal point. And again, that is why this is referred to the focus point. As you look at, as light comes in straight to this curved mirror, these rays all get reflected uh, through that focal point. Um, the reflections are basically bending inwards from the mirror. Now we call, uh, we call when the light rays are reflecting inwards, we call that converging. Uh, these are converging reflections. The concave mirror itself is often referred to as a converging mirror because it's able to bend the light in. But it doesn't necessarily have to bend the light in. Now I can't do it with the ray box because it's too large compared to the mirror. But if I could place an object between the focal point and the mirror, these reflections would no longer bend inwards, but they would bend out. Um, we've seen that in the ray diagrams. And that would be a case of diverging reflections. The nice thing about this mirror though is it's reflective on both sides. So what I'm gonna do is move the ray box to the other side of the mirror. So again, in this con configuration, uh, this mirror is being, acting as a concave mirror. 
But let me uh, slide this over a little bit. Now, I'm now reflecting in reflecting the light off the mirror where the mirror is curving away from away from the source. Um, you'll still see that I still have the light ray bouncing straight back through the principal axis. But watch what happens when I turn on the additional rays. And you'll see now that the light rays are diverging. Now, because these light rays diverge, they don't cross in the real space of our, of, in front of the mirror. Um, I would need to project them backwards and they would cross on the virtual side of the mirror. Now, it's also interesting to note that if you look at the path that these reflections take and project them backwards, you'll see that these parallel rays look like they're coming from the focal point. This is in this configuration, the mirror is a convex mirror. And because the focal point is on the virtual side of the mirror, we would say that the focal point is negative. So uh, just a real a demonstration with these light rays. Uh, keep that in mind. Again, these rules for drawing the ray diagrams are not just um, something we invented. Uh, they are what we actually see when we bounce rays off a physical mirror shape this way. All right. See you in the notes.